Throughout the weeks between the Kino review publishing and the writing of this script, I have struggled to answer a question I've had about myself. Why do I like Ascension more than Kino? For all things considered, Kino and Ascension might as well be the same map. They both have the Thunder Gun, they both are very easy, they both have boxy, interchangeable rooms. What gives? Everything points to the fact that I should just hate this map just as much, if not more, than Kino. After talking to some friends and some more pondering on the subject while driving across the American West, I think it boils down to three things. Layout, innovation, and environment. So let's talk about Ascension. Ascension is by far the largest map thus far, and it's not even close. In the grand scheme of modern zombies, it's about average in size, but coming off every map before it, this was a huge step up in size. The map in general is very interconnected to the central building where you spawn, but the three furthest areas do have fast travel if you want to get to spawn a little quicker. The map layout is the first to ever be four player friendly, truly. There are plenty of places to train and each area suits a slightly different skill level. The easiest of which is the PhD area. The map is very interconnected and this is really the first time in a zombies map that this happens. Every other map before this was very cut and dry. Go here to get there. A thing that Ascension did the most and best is innovate and bridge the gap between classic zombies design and modern zombies design. Ascension introduced a lot in the grand scheme of things. In the place of Double Tap, Ascension added two of the most iconic perks of all time. The first is Stamina Up, which increases your movement speed. It wasn't by a ridiculous amount, but the difference is very noticeable. The second is PhD Flopper. This was a game changer. This finally made a bunch of weapons viable. Mustang and Sally's, the awful Lawton, the Ray Gun, and some future explosive weapons, all of which are now super powerful. Not that they weren't powerful before, but because of negating explosive damage, they are just insane to use now. Ascension also added a few other utilities such as the Matryoshka dolls, which I think should have been taken in your grenade slot, but whatever. The Sickle, which isn't really new, it's more of a reskin of the Bowie Knife, but still makes the immersion better. And also the Gersh device. This is uh, essentially a black hole grenade, essentially sucking up the zombies, so if you're ever in a tight spot, just toss one of these out. Gersh devices also have a added ability of if you jump through them, you get teleported to a random spot on the map. All very cool features, but the final feature was the introduction of the main quest easter egg. More so the first multi-step easter egg. Unfortunately, Ascension's easter egg requires four players, but it was the first one as well, so I'll let it go and guess. This main quest involves a lot of random events and also getting all the best stuff out of the box. Easter eggs are a large portion of my enjoyment of zombie maps, so I will go into every easter egg in detail. I like to think of this as the Doris of easter eggs. Step 1 is grabbing the Gersh devices and tossing it at this battery generator looking thing outside the map. Kind of random, but also not far off from what most easter eggs have us do. Also interacting with this button with the Illuminati sign on it. The next step can be activated during a monkey round with all four players pressing each of the buttons. The third step is that all players need to stand on this circle plate near Pack-a-Punch for two minutes. Okay, that's kind of random. Then you have to grab letters in the air from the Lunar Landers. Finally, you need a bunch of powerful weapons to shoot a light in the ground. The string of events here are seemingly random, and even though I've done this easter egg a dozen times or so, I still don't fully get it. The Lunar Lander step is cool because it interacts with the map in some way, but everything else is just kind of random. There are much worse easter eggs though, so in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. The main objective is freeing Gersh, who, by the way, is the person that created the Thunder Gun and the Gersh device itself. It's kind of weird that in order to set the soul of him free, you need to ass blast him with his own creation. The final thing I enjoy about Ascension is the environment. The surrounding Cosmodrone is almost like a weird stadium with these massive floodlights, and in order to unlock Pack-a-Punch, you need to launch a rocket? This is also what I would imagine as one of the best hidden easter eggs, like, ever. Like, imagine back in the day, the new map comes out and you talk about launching the rocket in Ascension, then this guy comes up and chimes in and says, 
You can blow it up with a ray gun, you know that, right? And you don't believe him, but you go home that night and try it just in case, and it works. Like, what? Trek didn't need to add that in, but it's one of those classic Easter eggs from Trek that just sounds stupid enough to not work, but then it does. The Cosmodrone as a whole is pretty cool, and the map starts out in a very low saturated mode, and turning on the power turns on the color as well. Again, another neat detail that didn't need to be there, but it is. I get the map was kind of bland in color palette, but Black Ops 3 easily fixed this. I think the Black Ops 3 version of this map fixed nearly every minor issue with the map, and is the first map where I truly believe that a remake was needed. Still, I wish they made the easter egg solo friendly. It added color, it added the wonder fizz with perks that the monkeys couldn't steal, and also some gobble gums to completely mitigate monkey rounds. Speaking of which, let's talk about those chimps. I don't really mind the monkey rounds. Ascension is easy enough where at most they're a mild inconvenience. Sure, it can be annoying when a monkey steals a perk, but that's only really in the early game. On round 20, when I'm set up and I have thousands and thousands of points, Losing stamina up isn't that big of a deal, plus in the early game when it's most likely that the only perks you have are Jug and Quick Revive, you can just defend these from a single door. Quick Revive is the only perk you really want to protect anyway. Protecting these gives you a little bonus of an extra random perk. I don't really mind the monkeys, there are again much worse special enemies out there. Overall, Ascension is a decent map that brings a lot to the table and really started experimenting and getting wacky with its settings and designs. But its simplicity does knock it down a few points, but innovative enough to not drop it too low. I'm giving Ascension a 7.2 out of 10. C tier.